Hello and welcome to the respiratory module. I'm Dr. Andrew McNabb and I will be accompanying you through examination of the respiratory system in a cooperative child. Remember, you must always adjust your approach and be flexible when examining a child, taking into consideration their age, personality, and how well they are. A complete examination of the respiratory system must always include examination of the ears, nose, and throat. Hi, I'm Adam Lund. I'm the doctor on today. Hi, Dr. Lund. Is this Connell? This is Connell. Hey, yeah. Connell. Your first encounter with a patient allows you to make some general observations. The most essential and immediate observation is the acute assessment of the child. This information determines the pace, the focus, and the thoroughness of the exam. In emergency situations, an acute assessment may require direct medical intervention prior to the commencement of any further historical or physical investigations. If the child appears well, you will likely have time to perform a thorough history and physical examination. Keep in mind that much of the diagnosis of a respiratory problem in a child is formed through your observations. In your initial observations, you should obtain a general impression of the state of the child's health. Observe the nature and effort of his or her breathing during both inspiration and expiration. Also observe any signs of respiratory problems, noisy breathing, the quality of any cough, and the allergic salute or shiners. It is also important to make a quick assessment of the parent accompanying the child. You can gain valuable information and build rapport by recognizing the emotional state of the parent. Okay. Well, I don't see anything worrisome right now. Why don't we take a few minutes and talk and you can let me know how he's been doing. Sure. Okay. Why don't you guys start by telling me when you were last feeling well? Let's take a moment to briefly outline the major respiratory symptoms and historical points to be considered before conducting the physical exam. Age is an important factor when considering the common presenting symptoms of childhood respiratory disease. Important presenting features of respiratory illness in children include cough, sputum, hemoptysis, dyspnea, chest pain, wheeze, and other forms of noisy breathing. Other symptoms that may be of importance include hyperventilation, eczema, exanthems, and symptoms associated with the GI system. A history of recurrent or unusual respiratory infections, middle ear infections, or a previous history of croup can be clinically important and should be elicited. It is important to identify any exercise or sleep-related symptoms. A complete history of respiratory health should include information about the child's past medical history, labor and delivery history, prenatal history, family history and social history, information regarding allergies, medications, and immunizations should be sought. Okay, Connell, I just need to take a look at you now, all right? Always ensure that your hands have been washed prior to examining any patient. Mr. Green, do you want to give me a hand and we'll take off his gown? Okay. It's important to remember that in pediatrics, you will encounter patients of widely varying ages and stages of development be sensitive to children's differing needs for privacy. Also, provide the child with adequate covering during the examination. Without revealing to the child that you are observing his or her breathing pattern, note the respiratory rate as well as the depth, ease, and rhythm of respiration. A reasonable approach to taking the respiratory rate is the number of breaths in 15 seconds multiplied by four. In order to draw the child's attention away from breathing, you may palpate the radial pulse. Determine the respiratory rate and compare it with the normal values for the appropriate age group. Inspect the thorax both anteriorly and posteriorly First, noting movement of the chest wall, including symmetry, the presence of retractions, and the use of abdominal or accessory muscles in respiration. Next, Good focus on I'm the shape of the chest there. wall and any obvious you keep deformities. Doing the same thing. You're doing great. Finally, inspect the vertebral okay, column. Okay, Connell, I just need to look at your back. Irregularities. 
Okay, bring you look up at the ceiling so I can see. Good for you. Just looking up your nose. Continue your inspection by examining the nose for the presence of nasal flaring. Okay, great. I'm going to take a look inside your mouth, all right? I've got a special light for that. I think you can stick your tongue out really, really far. Oh, my goodness. Good for you. Tongue out. Stick your tongue way, way out. Uh, now pant like a puppy. Examine the mucous membranes of the lips and the mouth for the presence of central cyanosis. Good. Pat like a puppy. Additionally, Good inspect the oropharynx for any Excellent. signs of inflammation. Good for you. Okay. Have you ever had a doctor look in your ears before? In the yeah. case of a respiratory okay, look over infection, at your dad and I'm going to do that right it now. is common okay. to have involvement of the ears. Always inspect really? the ears in a complete okay. examination of the respiratory system. Examine the nail beds for evidence of peripheral cyanosis, clubbing, or any other abnormalities. Okay, Con, I'm going to feel your neck now. I want you to look up at the ceiling a little bit. Great. This doesn't the trachea can be palpated in the suprasternal notch and should be carefully examined for mobility and any deviation from the midline. Okay, Connell, I'm going to just feel for lumps or bumps around your face and around your neck, okay? You tell me if there's anywhere that's sore. Palpate the lymph nodes of the head and neck. The entire neck and chest region should be palpated. Crepitations under the skin may be suggestive of an air leak. Good. Okay. In most instances, chest excursion can be evaluated by having the child take a deep breath. Note the degree of chest excursion and the left to right okay. symmetry. I'm just going to watch you take a huge breath. Take as big a breath as you can. Big, 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 big. <gasps> if abnormal chest movement is suspected after observation, Good one can job. use palpation to measure chest excursion. Place your hands around the lower ribs posteriorly and oppose the thumbs on either side of the spine. On inspiration, both thumbs should move equal distances from their original positions. Okay. Do you think you can say 99 in a nice deep voice? 99. Whoa, that's pretty good. 99. When age allows, palpate for tactile fremitus using the 99 test. This is normally present on both sides equally. Good. In order to assess all lobes of each lung, you must evaluate tactile fremitus both posteriorly and anteriorly. Mm -hmm. 99. Mm -hmm. 99. Pulsus paradoxus is not a routinely used test in children, although it is useful in constrictive pericarditis, cardiac tamponade, asthma, or situations where serious airway obstruction is suspected. Okay, Connell, I'm going to knock on your chest now like it's a drum. I'll show you on your side first. Like that. It doesn't hurt, okay? Okay, open your mouth for me. Good. Percussion is a valuable technique if performed properly. It allows one to evaluate regions of the chest based on whether they sound hyper-resonant, dull, or flat. Begin your percussion anteriorly. Cardiac dullness is normally present. Remember, percussion in children calls for a much lighter touch than it does in adults. One should learn to feel as much as to hear the audible sounds. Good. All right. Okay, Connell, last part I'd need to do is just listen to your chest, okay? What I'll get you to do with your mouth open for me, I want you to take a nice slow breath in and out like this. <sighs> Good for you. Each lobe of both lungs should be auscultated individually using the diaphragm of a pediatric stethoscope. Remember that the lower lung lobes must be auscultated posteriorly and that sounds from both the right and left sides should be compared. Listen separately to inspiration and expiration. The normal ratio is three to one. Characterize the normal breath sounds as bronchial, bronchovesicular, or vesicular. Listen for adventitial sounds such as crepitations, wheezes or rubs. Differentiate upper versus lower airway obstruction. When consolidation is suspected, it is useful to auscultate for vocal resonance if the child's age allows. This concludes our examination of the respiratory system.